this is Zainab, your peace six tutor, um, giving you some last words of advice on your P6 exam for December 2017. Now, you've already done all the hard work, we've gone through all the questions, so what am I going to add today? Well, I'm going to reiterate everything that I have said to you before. Um, when you look at your section A of the exam, you know what the exam is. You have two sections, your section A, which is a compulsory section, and then you have section B, which is a choice section. Uh, which one should you do before? That's up to you. When you read the questions in those 15 minutes, there will be one question in there that will stand out and you will feel that, yes, I am a little bit more comfortable with this one. Start with that question first. If you think a section A question is a good question, then start with that. If you think that you would rather... Uh, you feel more comfortable with a section B style question, then uh, go for the section B style question. But start with your best foot forward. Look at the question and start with the question that you're most comfortable with because that, that, that gives you a little bit of a confidence boost as well. And you feel good that, yes, you know, the first question's gone, gone well. Um, but one thing you've got to make sure is that you stick within the time. So if you have 1.8 minute a mark and you need to count the amount of time available to you, make sure you're not over overdoing it on the time. Now when it comes to specifically section A and you're writing down your answers, show some element of planning. We've been through this at the revision stage when we've got, gone through questions and I've shown you how you go about planning your answer. Make sure that you, you have put some thought into, into the planning. Um, find out where your tick-off list is. Remember we went through this as well. Find out where that list is for, for your, your requirement and make sure you, will, you, you, know, you tick them off that yes, I've done this, I've done this bit of the, of the um, requirement, I've done that bit of the requirement, so you're, 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 you know, you're, you're, you're okay at the end, you've covered all grounds. Read the requirement very carefully. Guys, it's all in the requirement. What you have to do is written in the requirement. There's You don't need to guess things. Yes, you need to have the knowledge, but what is required is there in the requirement and you don't need it from anywhere else. So make sure you read the requirement very carefully. Now, going on to the topics that you need to be careful and you're, you're, you know, you are prepared for this. I don't like to call it tips, but my suggestions. Um, as far as individuals are concerned, make sure you're comfortable with all the investment options that individuals have, whether it is investing in EIS, in VCT, in CS. For all of these, make sure you know the different tax effects. What is the in income tax implications? What are the uh, CGT implications? What are the IHT implications? Um, make sure you go over this and, and you're comfortable with that. And then the other thing I would say with individuals is, is um, basis of assessment, uh, whether it is for sole traders or for partnership, uh, loss relief options, very important. What are the different loss relief options for individuals at different points in the life cycle of the business? Uh, personal, uh, personal service companies, um, IR35 and the implication of that pension contributions and the effect of pension contributions, what happens uh, with the annual, uh, annual allowance charge, how to calculate an annual allowance charge, uh, what is the effect of this charge. So these are things that I would strongly suggest you go back and you're comfortable with. And then of course, there's always the basics, things like employment income, lump sum payments, how do you deal with the lump sum payments, the share schemes, very important with employment income is the share schemes, termination uh, payments and how to deal with those termination payments. And then if I look at companies, for example, R&D, small and medium sized, um, large companies, R&D, very, very important. Uh, patent box relief is another one. Uh, the calculation of, of the deduction on the patent box relief. Uh, remember, patent box relief is something that has been phased in over time and every year it is changing. So it's very possible that the examiner brings, a, bring this, in, uh, brings this in for a few uh, marks. And then you have purchase of own shares, uh, group relief, whether it is the 75% group. If there is a group question, expect a little bit of everything. Expect the 75% groups. 
uh, on, on group relief. Expect the 75% capital gains because those two can very easily be combined. And then, of course, you have to think about consortium as well. Uh, recognizing, sometimes recognizing that a consortium exists is, is what, what uh, becomes difficult for students. So make sure you're comfortable with being able to recognize uh, a consortium because the examiner may not necessarily use the word consortium. You just have to recognize it for yourself. Um, and then you think about uh, things like, I've already mentioned purchase of own shares. When you look at purchase of own shares, you need to think about the implication on the company as well as the implication on the individual shareholder as well. Then you, uh, uh, as far as companies are concerned, the sale of another company, whether it is the sale of trade, how do you deal with the sale of trade, or alternatively, the sale of shares. If there is a sale of shares, be careful about things like degrouping charges, things like SSE being available. Uh, uh, remember, when you are applying rules, uh, state the rule and then apply the rule. For example, if you want to say, yes, SSE is available, state the rule, what is SSE, and then move into applying the rule, whether it is applicable or not. Um, as far as CGT is, is concerned, <coughs> sorry, as far as CGT is concerned, calculation of basics of CGT, reliefs on CGT for individuals. We have a lot of reliefs for individuals and you, you need to make sure you're comfortable with that. Uh, overseas aspects of capital gains together with overseas aspects of income tax, these two are often mixed together. Remember uh, um, remittance basis and remittance basis charge and when it's applicable. And then of course with the calculation of C uh, CGT you have the different variations you need to think about. Whether it is takeover, whether it is sale of shares which was acquired at different dates or um, leases, these are all things that you need to be comfortable with. Now often you will find that CGT and IHT is mixed in together. This is what we call P6, the mixture of taxes. Um, under IHT, I mean apart from the basic calculation of IHT, the lifetime reliefs, um, the lifetime exemptions that are available, make sure you know about all the reliefs that you have. So BPR, APR, QSR, uh, DTR, these are very important uh, reliefs that you have. What happens when you have a movement of an asset from one individual to another individual? What are the implications on that? Be ready to give some advice on it. Uh, valuation rules. I mean, transfer value, the most common ones that, that tend to come up is things like diminution in value principle with the mixture of, of um related party or related property rules. So make sure you're comfortable with all these elements. I mean, you have a few days left before the exam. What would I suggest you do between now and then? Practice, practice, practice. At this stage, please do not be going through your class notes and learning things. It's, you know, now if you need to learn, you're learning from the questions. So practice as many questions. I've given you a list of questions to do. Make sure you're ticking all those off as we speak. And last but not least, good luck for your exam and I'll see you outside the exam hall.